So unfortunate things do happen in the studio and for me, that was the power switch on my Atom A7 monitors. Now they've been working great for years and just one day I went to flip the switch and it went bad. So I'm gonna show you a quick fix. Uh, you don't have to take this to the shop. You can actually find the parts and do this quite easily yourself if you have the version of the A7s that I have. I'm not gonna be repairing the A7X, um, though the repair may be similar. This is gonna be for the original Atom A7s. Okay, so my GoPro doesn't have a macro, but I'm gonna show you guys uh, how to adjust this and take care of it. So the power panel has four screws, which we're going to undo. Okay, so we've got the screws out. Now we're gonna carefully, with a plastic spudger, Remove the front face plate. And then take the camera off here. Show you guys what we got back here. So you can see that the power button is encased by this plastic coating with this zip tie right here. Now the zip tie is usually cut pretty tight, so don't try to cut the zip tie itself. Actually what you want to do, as I've already taken the other one off, is as the zip tie is like this, you want to stick a piece of metal up into the back here and push it out so that the zip tie will uh, just pop off or break. If that's the case, you want to get rid of this guy, it's no use anymore. And neither is this casing. This thing's a piece of garbage. Um, I'm sure it had some insulating properties of some sort, but uh, it was pretty tough to get off. You can see I made an incision down one side here. Let's move the camera over here. Made an incision down the side, the length of it, and then slowly peeled it open and then peeled it off kind of like a banana peel around the, the, the casing just to make sure that I didn't damage any of the wires underneath. So it took a little bit of time, so take your time with that. That's really important to get that off in one piece and away from the switch and uh, making sure that you don't damage the uh, LED lights, which are still glued in right here in their original casing. Uh, you can see underneath the casing is just these two wires. They're plastic coated and they should be zip tied back here. If not, be very certain to make sure that you mark which one is the positive and negative or the top and bottom. So I just put a black Sharpie mark on the plastic casing on the bottom one here so I know that that one is the one that connects to the bottom terminal. And here is the busted guy. You can see that the little switch inside got locked and it won't move anymore. And we have the two terminals which were connected right here, like so. Uh, very delicately uh, wedge them off. And then you're gonna be left with this guy still encased in here. Uh, now there's tons of glue right, uh, around this. Be very careful removing the glue and you're gonna have to do all the glue. And then once you get all the glue off, you can see here on this one, that uh, there's still some remnants of the glue left around there. Um, use something very surgical, like a really sharp X-Acto knife or something. Be just, uh, careful not to cut yourself and be careful not to damage the LED light that is connected just above. Leave that glued in. And you can see this guy has uh, these pins. They're really stiff on this one. Uh, they're just little plastic pieces that wedged in. Uh, what you need to do is basically depress those so that it'll slide out easily once you have the connections removed. Here is my replacement part, and it feels like it's just gonna be uh, just a better part overall. You can see it's the same. And then on one side, there's a little piece of plastic that sticks out. And you can see right here, there's a little groove where this guy slides in. So position him properly, and then slowly, Snap this guy into place like so. And then on the back here, I'm just gonna connect the terminals. 
Okay, so you see I've got the connections back on. That's all you really need. You don't need that plastic casing, which is this thing. So now I'm gonna just put this back in place. And let's see if I put it all together, if we can power this bad boy up now and get some power into this. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if this worked. Boom. There we go. Now this repair probably took me for labor and time maximum an hour. Uh, I didn't really keep track of it because I had to break it up. The hardest thing to find was the part. I looked at all the electronic stores, uh, you name it, Fry's, Radio Shack, going down the line. Uh, nobody had this part. Uh, I found it on eBay. There's a guy in Chicago selling these parts and a buddy of mine who's an electrician said you can get these pretty cheap from China. And you can get them in different colors, so if you're not happy with black or you want it to light up, do something weird like that, you can order it from China and it takes a little bit longer, probably like a week or two to get here, depending on how urgent you need it. Uh, looking around locally in the United States could probably find something a lot faster. So this is a quick fix. Don't take your speaker to a repair store and pay hundreds of dollars. Uh, the part literally cost me less than 10 bucks. So, uh, whatever you do, however you do it, be very gentle. That's my word of advice for this. And take your time. Uh, when I bought these, they were very expensive. I'm sure they're nowhere near what the price I paid for them, but they sound great still. I've had these speakers for over 10 years. And this is the first time I've had a problem with them. And uh, it seemed devastating at first, but to be honest, this was very painless. So I hope this helps out. If you have any questions, I didn't cover something that you want to know, just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. This is David at Shine On Studio in Oakland, California. Good luck.